Hey everybody, welcome back to Gray County Grilling. Chris here, and today we are making pulled pork carnitas. We've got a whole pork shoulder that we are going to throw in the smoker, cook it until it just falls apart. It is gonna be awesome, stick around. Here is the pork shoulder that we're going to be using for our pork carnitas tomorrow when we finally get it on the cooker. Tonight though, we are going to marinate it and I'm going to be following Malcolm Reed's recipe for how he did his pork carnitas. First step is to coat it with some all-purpose rub. And for that, I have some garlic pepper, although it's not really pepper, it's garlic, salt, and pepper. So that is gonna give us a good base coat. And I'm just gonna get that flipped over and do the other side and we'll be right back. The pork has been seasoned on both sides with the salt, pepper, and garlic. Next, we're going to get some chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. And what you wanna use is about half of a small can and just kind of smear that all over like that. Try and get as much down into the little cuts as you can. All right, we're going to flip it over and do the other side as well. And we have the pork shoulder coated on both sides with the chipotle peppers. Next, we've got it in a giant bowl. You can see here. Uh, in Malcolm's video, he uses a gallon Ziploc bag, but I don't have that on hand, so we're just using a giant ass bowl. Next step, we're going to add in orange juice. I'm going to put in half an onion. We've also got four halves of lime, so give it a squeeze and toss it in. There we go, and then four orange quarters which would equal one whole orange for those of you doing the math at home. Wow. <laughs> and there you have it. I'm gonna put the lid on this bowl. We're gonna get it in the fridge and let it sit for about 12 hours overnight. We've got the smoker started and heating up. We're looking for a grill temperature of about 275 today. And for the first four hours, just like Malcolm Reed did, I am not going to worry about the internal temperature of the pork shoulder. All I'm gonna be looking for is the development of the bark and good color. So that's the main goal in the first four hours. After that, we're going to wrap it and braise it. I'll show you exactly what we do there. Right now, we are just waiting for the pit to come up to temp. So our pork shoulder has rested overnight for about 12 hours. And now we're just gonna add some more layers of flavor onto it. So first, we will hit it with the salt, pepper, and garlic just a little bit. And that is gonna be our first layer of flavor on this. No. Second, we're gonna use just some chili powder. And that is gonna give us our southwest flavor and it is really going to add a lot of color. Make sure you get it nice and coated well. And ground cumin. I don't have a whole lot of it, so I'll just kind of do what I can over it right here. You don't need a whole lot. 
of the cumin to add a really good layer of flavor. Perfect. And then I grab just a little bit of cur curry powder, just to give it a little bit extra pop. I know curry powder in pork carnitas doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but whatever. It's going to add some great flavor to the bark of this thing. And finally, I've just got some smoky barbecue rub, and that's just going to help us with the color and a little bit more flavor. All right, and that's the pork butt. We are ready for the first step. Just waiting for the smoker to get up temperature, then we'll be on our way. Okay, we hit 275 on the smoker, so it is time to get the pork shoulder on. There we go. No, nothing fancy. Just throw it on. Here's the lid. And like I said, I'm not going to worry about the internal temperature of the pork shoulder for now. I'm just gonna worry about developing the bark and the flavors. After the bark has been set, then we're going to get a nice braising liquid ready to go. So we'll see you in a few hours. We're an hour and a half in so far. I wanna take a peek and see how that bark is coming along. Oh, that is coming along nicely. Wow. Yeah, that is a great bark already on that. That looks fantastic. Hey, we're gonna let it go for about another two and a half hours and then move on to the next step. So our pork has been going for about four and a half hours now. And as you can see, it has a fantastic bark on it. This looks awesome. So it's time for us to get this thing braising. First, we are going to add some tomato juice. Just dump it right in. So I'm gonna use about half a can. I don't have a whole lot of space in here. Then we are going to add in some orange juice. well and this is really going to add some great flavor while it's braising in here and color, too. and color we got some limes squeeze the lime juice in just like that some lemon wedges I'm not gonna squeeze them just gonna dump those in as well and we've got some chopped up garlic, throw those in, and then to top it all off, we're going to throw in a few bay leaves. Appetizing in the making. Appetizing in the making. There's one, and two, and that's kind of a third, so there we go. Three bay leaves in there, and then I'm going to wrap her in foil put her back on the smoker and she's gonna go for about another three hours so I'm also going to put a temperature probe in here at this point as well because now I'm going to check for the internal temperature I'm gonna bring her up to about 202 203 and then it should just fall apart perfectly stick around so the thermo pro is reading 203 internal temperature on the pork shoulder so what I'm gonna do now is take my instant read and check with that through the tin foil. And I'm also gonna probe for tenderness. What are we getting here? 200, 202. I'm feeling a little bit of resistance yet. And that's reading 205. Oh, there's the bone. <laughs> I 
Okay, I'll check one more. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is pull it off the smoker, get it inside and let it rest for a bit. I mean, it's done way early anyway. It's only about 3.30 in the afternoon. I didn't think it would be done this soon. It's only been six and a half hours. So I'll take it inside. I will probably just stick it in the oven just to uh, let it rest. And we'll check it in a little bit. Okay, folks, here's what's left of it. Now, you may have seen that we missed a step after we took it out and pulled it apart, but that's because we had company over and it smelled amazing and we were all just ready to go. So this here is what it was frying or not. It was cooking in for the last few hours of cooking. You'll see some citrus and tomato juice and the bones there. Which pulled right off. Yeah, the bones came out so clean. And then this is the leftovers from dinner. We had eight people over and it was excellent. Everyone loved it. The kids loved it. Yeah, still love it. The kids are picking at it, so... Oh yeah. Oh, that was a big piece. The seven-year-old <laughs> took the biggest piece. Get it out of there. So, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, hit that um, thumbs up button. Subscribe so you can hear more of myself. And thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.